Okay, well, we'll do a little bit of a couple of simple little pike fly patterns that worked a couple weekends ago for Dan and I and Quentin. We were down in Twin Lakes. And this is the first one I'll be doing is it's kind of a, it's a Whistler pattern. But I mean, if you look at it, I mean, it could be different little, I mean, but it's as close as to a whistle pattern as I found. I mean, that's instead of using the, uh, the uh, silver tinsel flash boo like I have in here, all I use is just the uh, crystal flash or whatever it is, the flash boo. So anyways, that's what it's going to look like. Um, you can use a uh, 34 double aught 7 hook, but it's a little short shank. So I use the, I can't recall the number of this one, but, but it's a... Uh, it's it's a mustad and it might be a 34011. It's it's a one and a half times long, longer than the 34 to one seven. And it just gives you more um, room to tie your materials on. Otherwise, it gets a little bit too short and congested. So is that, is that naturally bent like that? that no, I I tweaked it a bit. <laughs> I'm just experimenting a bit. I mean, it's this one here. It wasn't bent, so I'm trying this one here just to see what it would do because. So you turn it up at about a 15 degree angle. Uh, I don't know if it's a 15, but it's slightly. It's probably five or six, anyways. But, but the fly will actually, because I tied the bead on the top side, the fly will actually should, in theory, ride in the water, looking like this here. That's why the darker colors on the top, and then the and the white is the last one that I tie on. Okay, we'll start off as we normally do. Dress the hook. If I can see it here. And I just go down about halfway and then I just come back. It's just kind of uh, gives it a good point. To and right where I bent it is where I want to tie the eye in. And during the winter months is when I start doing a lot of prefabbing and whatnot. So I had about a, a chunk of three or four feet of uh, bead chain and all I did was cut it up into two little pieces so that I had my barbell eyes already pre-made enough for <coughs> a couple hundred pipe flies. Like Dan says, I, only, I don't tie one at a time, I prep for a couple hundred. <laughs> so again, I just set it on top, and then I do a couple of loose wraps just to get it on. And if I don't like where I put it, like right now, I don't like where that's sitting. So I'll just take it back off again, and I'll adjust it again, and just a couple little wraps. And then once I see where, where I like it, then I'll do a couple of figure eight wraps on top. And then you can adjust it at that point and tweak it as much as you want so that it sits where, you're, where you want to put it. And then uh, you can even look at it straight on to make sure that it's symmetrical so that one's not sticking out farther past the other one. So if you look right now, it's, it's looking not too bad there right there. So a couple more figure eights, and then I'll build a little dam behind it. And then I'll go in front of it as well. And then a couple more figure eights. And then now what I'll do, I don't think this is really necessary, but I do it out of habit. I go back and I, can, I just cover up all the hook. And what it does, it just, gives a, a better base for the, for the hair to stick to. So now we've got that sitting on here. And if we look at this pattern here, what I want to tie in here first, because it's sitting in the vise like so, but it's gonna ride this way. So I want to start with my darker colors first. So I'll take a chunk of bucktail and I'm doing an orange pattern here, but we've had success on the weekend with orange, red, and the blue pattern. Yellow. And yellow. 
So the blue, this was the blue here. And again, it's the same, same kind, but with the, with the slap and feathers, I mean, that was pink chenille, but it's kind of a purple chenille now because it, the color ran. <laughs> so, but the fish didn't seem to care. So I'm going to cut a little. And I don't stack the deer here either. Are you fishing water on the lake? I haven't. Uh, I haven't this year. I fished it a few years ago. Pike or for where pike. You for pike. For, where do I go for pike? Well, Mayatan is good. Okay. It's out by Star Lake. Uh, if you wanna, and then Wabamin is the next closest one. If you wanna go north, you can start getting into Lacknanun, uh, Nakamin. Uh, Laxanan, whatnot, and then you can go down south to Pigeon. But Pigeon, you're going to be congested Big. with a bunch of people there. Big. Pardon me? Big Lake. Big Lake, yeah. So what I'll do here is, is I want to go about one and a half or two times the length. So, but I've, I've tied up a few of them now, so I've kind of got it measured up that at the end of my hook here is about where I want it. So I'll just take and hold it. Now I could take and trim them off here which at times it's easier, but I'm just gonna show it here as the way I do it here, and then I'll just pinch the thread, pull down <coughs> just so it sits on, and then pull it straight up. And it's better to use Kevlar thread here, but I'm just using the six aught, so if I break my thread, you'll have to bear with me here. So that's, it's sitting on the top there now and it, you can actually smudge it around or so that it totally encases the hook, but I just like to go three quarters of the way around. So I've got that wrapped around there and now what I'll do is I'll just lift this up here and I'll trim these off. This is where if you trim them earlier then it makes it a bit, e bit easier. But. That's why it's, it's nice now I got my tying room. I don't uh, get deer hair all over the living room anymore. And then I just take a little bit of head cement and just smudge it into the bucktail to help bind it down. And I'll still hold it on the top side because it's still fairly loose. But now what I'll do is I'll just start taking wraps and tying it down. And then it actually binds it back in again. So that's the first portion for the material. And then to add a little bit of flash, if you can okay. use any different color you want, uh, but I'm just using it just as, a, as an accent color, just using the white flash. And I guess as they always say, uh, too much is, is not enough, but I mean, I don't really sit and count, but I mean, there's probably six or seven strands in here. And then what I'll do is I will measure it up, because I want it to be about the same length as the bucktail, so I'll just keep manipulating it until I get it to where I want it to be. And that's about good right there. And then I'll do a pinch wrap again, so that material stays on the top. And I won't cut this off yet, because what I'll do is I'll wrap it down, just so in front of the barbells, and then I'll fold this over and catch it, and that way it'll prevent it from pulling out if it ever gets caught in the pike's teeth. So there's a little bit of the, the flash that, as it's going through the water, the sunlight or whatever will catch it and just create a little bit of a flash. And now we'll do the top part of the fly with the white bucktail. And I never really uh, figured out how much bucktail a person should use, but I've tried using thicker clumps than this, but it was tougher to work with. It wasn't, 
securing right so I just use a little bit at a time and then I'll, I've got it now to where it's almost well the thickness there that is manageable enough for myself so it's easier to cast too. what's that easier to cast also well actually it's the bucktail doesn't really retain the water as much so it's it's these little beads that hurt that when you get hit with them yeah. You can hear him whistling. Yeah. And again, I mean, after a while, you get to uh, get to know roughly how much uh, hair to cut off and whatnot. But but if you don't put enough on at the beginning, you can always put more on. If you put too much on, you can always take some off. So it's <clears throat> so again, I'll lay it on the top, and I want it to be about the same length. I mean, I'm not gonna measure precisely but it looks pretty good right there and again I'll do the pinch wrap go down just snug it up a little bit and then bring it straight up and then snug it up on top and that that'll help it keep it from rolling and then I'll just do a couple of little tight little wraps here and then what I'll do is I'll just kind of spin it and have a look and I just want it on the top side I don't want it to go down on the sides it's a little bit crooked, but after a few pike, it's going to be crooked anyways. And then do the same thing here. I want to take and cut off that excess. And you don't want to use your, your good fine scissors for this stuff. I mean, that's why I'm using a pair of these travel scissors here for the for the bucktail, I mean, it's... And again, I'll just take some head cement and just kind of push it in. It'll... And this just helps the, 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 the hair from being pulled out. Okay, so that's these two here. And I've tied some of these without putting the uh, saddle hackle on the side, but but checking on some of the websites, they said they actually substitute for a lateral line on a fish. So I figured, well, I've got a bunch of small little remnants of saddle hackle, so I'll just put them on the sides. So I'll just throw one in on one side here. Just a loose wrap on it. And one on the opposite side. And again, I don't know if this is absolutely necessary, but if anything, it, it does help with having a couple of extra kickers up there to create some movement. Let me just cut these off here. And then we'll just bind them down. Okay, and then we'll go with some bright pink chenille. At first I thought when I looked at the pattern, I said pink. Why am I going to put pink on the hook? But, but uh, our fishing buddy Aaron, who has been out of town for quite some time, uh, he was last year or the year before, he brought a, a Whistler pattern with him that he tied up using this pink and he outfished us, so, so I started tying with pink now. <laughs> <laughs> and it does make a, a nice flashy look and fly, so it's... And so I'll just tie them on, on the top side and I want this to come right where we tied in all the materials. Now I could use the rotary version of this vise, but I'm not going to. So not what I bought it for. And I'm just going to do a few wraps. And I'm going to wrap it right up behind the eyes. Did you see that was medium or large? This is a large. You could probably get away with a medium. And I'll just put one wrap from behind it. I want to save some material for the slapping feather. <coughs> and 
And again, I always, one, I, I throw a few wraps, two wraps in the front and two wraps in the back. And again, it's out of habit, whether or not it's really necessary. But, and then I'll just, after I cut it, I'll just do a couple more wraps. And so far, I mean, that's, that's the fly so far. It's fairly, fairly easy to tie in, it's durable. And now all we got left now is just to tie in the slap and feather. And did I forget it? I should have something over here. No, we'll steal this one. Should have been an orange one. Bear with me for a minute. I've got a bunch here. Now, does anybody know the proper name of this? Is it, is it schlappen, schlippen, slurpen, schlapp, or whatever? How do you pronounce that? Schlappen. Schlappen? Okay. Because I've heard it called many different names. Sounds like a good Irish word. Schlappen, a feather on the hook, or Hey, so basically, it's a, it's a nice, webby feather. And it works great for pike flies for, for the web. And all I do is I hold it at the end and then I'll just fold it down so that the webs are sticking out from it. And it doesn't matter which way I tie it on, I, I like to have it so that when I'm wrapping it, fibers are pointing back, but it never works for me so I don't, I gave up on it. So, so it really doesn't matter to me, I mean. So what I'll do is I'll tie this in, a few wraps here just to hold it for now. And I'll get rid of this tip, because I don't want it there. And I'll wrap that around a bit, and then I'll just put the thread in the front here, just so it's out of the way. Now I'm just going to take and start wrapping the feather, and trying to get it so it goes towards the back. Just come in with your fingers, buddy. Yeah, that's... It's what I end up trying to do, but if it doesn't work that way, like I say, after a few pike, it's not going to look that way anyways. You'll be slapping it. And I, I, I don't know when to stop when I'm wrapping it, but I just well, keep... You get to the end, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, also with the, with the stem thickness, once I start getting to the thicker stem, then I'm going to stop anyways, whether or not I have too much or not enough on there. So now what I'll do is, is I'll take, I'll hold this forward, and I'll just take and wrap a couple of wraps to hold that down. And then I'll put another couple of wraps in behind and again. And to me, it just helps lock the material in there. Then I'll take and go in with my scissors here. And before I start wrapping the thread again, I'm just going to take and drop the head cement on the top side. And what that'll do is it'll bind in with that cut portion of the stem and then hopefully lock in there. So I'll just take a few wraps here. Got a few stragglers sticking out here. Get rid of those. And this is where you just start. I mean, if you had a three aught thread, you might want to use it, or if you had a DMC yarn, because you want to build up a little bit of a head here. So, so you just go crazy with it for a little bit. And it's, it's a fairly easy pattern. I mean, 
when I first looked at it and I said, well, it's going to be a tough pattern to tie, but after I tied a few of them, it's not really as tough once you get set up and going for it. What and size hook is that, Paul? What's that? What size hook is that? This one here is a, uh, a two watt. And because of the, the size of the hook and stuff, I mean, I can just whip finish with my, with my hands here and then. And I, I like to do about five or six here. And then, then I do two or three whips. And then I'm gonna head cement it anyways. You don't know how to use that whipping tool either, huh? <laughs> the whipping tool? Just, uh... Forgot it at home. sitting in a garbage can. <laughs> you have one like this? Yeah. Put that around me. Yep. I'll take it out and throw it in the road for you. Because basically doing it by hand is the same same thing. I mean, you're going to take and you create the figure four, and then you just take and spin it around, well, up, and then you're off. So it's so it's the same. And and Rod a couple of times ago he he demonstrated his way, and it's basically the same thing. You're keeping the one point here, and you're just wrapping the loop over top of itself, and then you pull it tight. So there's three different. Uh, and then there's the other style of, then that's the one you throw away. <laughs> I tried using that one and I, and I had, I had no luck with that one. So, but anyways, I could, uh, I could build this head up a little bit more, but I think I'm fine with this one right now the way it is. So you don't work underneath the hook at all. It all work around top. I do everything on the top because when I'm done, that's how it's going to sit in the water is, is like this here. No, it's, I like it. So, and it's, it's simple. Yeah. There's not that many materials to it. And, I mean, you can do a different variations of colors. I mean, you don't really have to have the pink there. I and mean, if you want to go white or gold or blue, I mean. Have, have you done any with uh, lead eyes or tungsten eyes? No, I, I, uh, I'll get hit for sure with them, so I won't. <laughs> you don't want that heavy weight in the back of the head. Uh, with the next pattern I tie, well, I'll be I'll be using with uh, with the barbell eyes, but it's not tungsten. Yeah.